What's going on, everybody? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to Beauty and the Beast. I don't know what episode this is, but we have a lot of fun doing this. I don't think we're counting. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is something we actually count. What's going on, everybody? I hope you guys had a great week. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for coming and sitting in with us for a few minutes. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. It's been a, a nice, really nice laid-back week for me. Uh, got to spend some great time with my wife. Uh, a good friend of mine got married. Did a lot of things. Uh, yeah. What's been going on with you this week? You been playing any video games? Um, well, the game you see, Dead Block. You guys, this is a game that I talked about. I think it was two weeks ago. I talked about this on the Beastly Thoughts show with some of the Beastly Thoughts guys. And uh, I mentioned this game and I asked, do you like Call of Duty Zombies? If you like Call of Duty Zombies, then more than likely you would love this game. What do you think about this game? Tell the audience what are some of the finer points about it and how would you compare this game to Call of Duty Zombies? I like it way better than Zombies, um, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I like how you can like get all these special things to attach to the the doors and stuff because each person has their own so that, I really like that. This game and is... It's a, it's a strategy game. You really got to work together. Really, really deep, believe it or not, guys. It's cartoony the way it looks. It's just like ghosts. I mean, ghosts. It's just like zombies in a way, but in another way, it, it supersedes zombies uh, by the depth of it. Now, first of all... It's super fun. It's not online. It's four-player local co-op, so it, it can be four-player split-screen. The boys wanted to play, too, but... I figured uh, we'll go ahead and play later on as a family, but I wanted to do just split screen for you guys so you guys can get a better idea of what goes on in the game. Kate picked, of course, the black chick uh, <laughs> with the afro. No, she picked her. That's who you always play with. I picked the, the big white guy with the, the construction worker. There's also a little chubby boy. Yeah, a little little white boy with a hamburger. And who? Yeah, he has a burger. And who's the, the fourth character? Uh, that's it. There's oh, only three. Okay. There's three characters in this game, and uh, you can play four-player split-screen, so somebody would always have to be the same character as somebody else. But as you see, it's pretty standard. It's melee attacks. You block up windows. But not only do you block them up, you, you go from room to room finding loot, and the loot actually gives you special abilities. Now, uh, what is like the... this bomb right here. See the bomb she just put up? That bomb, it'll hold the enemies outside that window for a certain amount of time. And all the enemies that come to that window are stuck outside, and once they build up, what happens? It blows up. It destroys all of them. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it worked. Some of these levels in this game are based on the amount of enemies you kill. She just put another bomb out. And some are based on finding things. Now, this one here in particular, we had to find three parts of a guitar. Yeah. And it had been so long since we played this game. We be when we first played this game, we beat it in one sitting. We just completely demolished it. Stop. <laughs> it's very fun. But not only do you get just these one, uh, you know, little abilities, you get like four, three or four for each character. So uh, I only use usually two. But uh, I don't know about you. What's your favorite ability? Her bomb? The bomb and the laser. I get a laser that just zaps them all real easily. Now, if you guys look on the bottom of the map, you see, like, on her side, there's a bomb there and then uh, that has two, and then there's some wood that's seven. But the two question marks, you find them on each level. And uh, one of them is a laser, and they walk under the door, and it zaps them, they disappear. And I don't know what the other one is. Now, my character, he does, he, he likes to use ice. So he puts uh, things on the doorways that make them walk. And watch what I'm doing here. See, I put a piece of steak. It lures them to it. I put some steak on that, that heater, and it cooks it. And they, uh, they walk over to it, and they smell it, and it kind of, you know, gets their mind off of what's going on. But that's ice there. And when they walk through, it turns them into ice, and you can kill them with one hit. And see, this game, this level isn't based on kills alone, it's based on finding items. So, you know, as you look around, you find the items, but you gotta just keep them away. And, uh, like right now, I'm sifting through this luggage and stuff, and, and those little nuts and bolts, they actually help build up your specials, so you get, you know, more it's, ice. It's not a very deep game, but it's extremely fun. Very, very fun. So I hope you guys enjoy the footage, uh, and uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. This game is on the PlayStation Network, for the PS3, I would love to see them remake this with PS4, and actually have more, more levels. And yeah, stuff, more there, characters. There, there is one uh, DLC that was released for this game. It's three dollars. It's a map pack that you know gives you a few extra new levels. But I mean, it's really a fun game. It's only six ninety nine on the PlayStation Network. Uh, if you run through it at, in one sitting, you're probably looking at what five hours worth of play. 
Yeah, yeah, I can't really remember. Because it's been so long. We beat this game a long, like two, three years ago. Yeah. It's been a long time. So it's, it's something we don't play often, but it's something that came to my mind when I was talking to the guys. I think this is a PlayStation Network gem that a lot of people don't know about. And if you do like Call of Duty Zombies, there's nothing wrong with that. I like Call of Duty Zombies too, but if you want to play a game like that that doesn't have as much stress... Yeah. Uh, not overwhelmed. You don't get overwhelmed by these things coming at you. It's not quite as scary. It's more fun. Then I, I would suggest pulling ten bucks out of your your credit card and getting this game and the map packs and uh, going in and having some fun. Now our anniversary, 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 anniversary was yesterday. Today is the seventeenth, so of course we recorded this. We it's pre-recorded, uh, but our anniversary was the seventh, the sixteenth mm -hmm. of May, and. Uh, it's been five years. How do you put up with me for five years? It was very hard. Like, that's what she said. Yeah, um, yeah it, it has been a long time. Five years. I'm really, really happy. But it's been easy, so no biggie. That's not what she said. Um, I'm really happy that we, we've reached this, this moment in our life. I can't wait till 10 and 15 and 20. Uh, making it with somebody, guys, is something that a lot of people can't do. I mean, in, in today's... In this day and age, it seems more hard for people to stay actually, together. Yeah, find someone they can kick it with and spend time with, and, with. Yeah, and have have you know th conversations and special moments with. And uh, I'm I'm very blessed. I played video games with. Yeah, see, she's she's hardcore in these video games, Can't man. Leave we it out. Doing? And your character be switching when she walks. Uh, uh, uh. But um, <laughs> anyway, it's been five years. What did we do yesterday, babe? Tell them about our day. We got up. Yesterday and had some breakfast. We went to the Waffle House. Um, yeah, we we did a couple things. Let's see. The, the my favorite part was the movies. Yeah, we went to the, we went to the movies. And now you know I'm not made of money, guys. You know, that's why I don't have nothing. But um, <laughs> we went to the movies and saw Godzilla. Godzilla. We went and saw Godzilla, and uh, it was pretty it was fun. Awesome. We went and uh, played some uh, mini golf at a place called Dixieland here play some laser tag. This is the kind of stuff we do. Now, you guys might think, hey, look, you're 35 years old. You should be, you know, whining. And we do have wine, but we like to play video games, too. Well, I have wine. Yeah, I don't drink. <laughs> but we, we like to, uh, you know, have fun and do things that, you know, make us feel young and, 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 yeah. and happy. So we went and played some laser tag. We went and did some miniature golf, which Kate wins in. Uh, she's very... Because I'm miniature. Yeah, she's she's fun size, and uh, she she's real good at she's very good at hand eye coordination. Uh, we went and saw Godzilla, and we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about this movie. Um, we saw Spider Man too. We talked to you guys about that last week, and we were unfortunately underwhelmed by this movie. I'm now, impressed. What, what were your thoughts on Godzilla uh, when we left the theater? No spoilers, guys. Unless the, if you do spoil something, just give a disclaimer before you say it so they can mute us or well, I'll try go, not go to back to Pornhub or something, huh? Basically, I thought it was awesome. I mean, I liked the first Godzilla. Boo. Only because my dad used to watch it all the time when I was a kid, so it's like... Um, he watches all the time now. So. Well, yeah, but, but when I was a kid, that, that's all I remembered is him watching that movie. But this one is way better than that Godzilla. This new one is awesome. Now, let me say something about the old Godzilla. If you like the old Godzilla, there's something wrong with you. And unfortunately, no. I talked to my dad about this yesterday. My dad, I was on the way to the movie theater. He said, is it as good as the, the first Godzilla movie? I said, which one? He said, the one with Matthew Broderick. I said, oh, God, you're joking, right? He said, no, I, I actually like that movie, son. I said, oh, my God. Matthew, you got Simba in a movie with Godzilla, and Godzilla's hatching the other little Godzilla... It was good. ...lings, and it, he was a big iguana, okay? Bottom line, Godzilla in the original movie was an iguana. In this movie, Godzilla is Titanic. He's huge. He looks like he's supposed to look. He has expression. He yeah, can, you can his, tell he's his angry. It's crazy. He, uh, you can tell he's mad. And see, the thing is, uh, the studio was given the right to Godzilla only. They weren't given the right to uh, Mothra or you know any of the the classic Godzilla monsters because they wanted to uh, see how well the movie did before they made any kind of deal to release the rights of any of the others. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna the next Godzilla movie will have some classic, uh, you know. Godzilla enemies. enemies in it because Godzilla's fought in everybody. He was actually supposed to fight Batman, but the, the studio said no at the last minute. <laughs> but um, Godzilla fighting these things, or I'm not going to spoil anything, but when Godzilla fights in this movie, 
and it shows him, you feel that he's just nothing but, he's so focused. Absolutely focused. He has a goal in mind. He, uh, and see, the people are, of course, terrified of this giant thing. It's so huge. But he's not there for the human beings at all. He's only there basically to restore order. Yeah. And uh, it just it felt really, really awesome seeing how big he was. And, you know, at certain points in the movie, you thought he was going to kill everybody. And he goes out of his way to not do it. You remember when he went down and then came Under, the, bo yeah, under he, the boat. He went under a giant... Uh, a, a airline was it? What are they called? A, air, um, a naval base. He went underneath it and came up on the other side, and it was it caused like a huge tidal wave. But he did it to avoid killing people. But the fight, the fights in the movie made the movie worthwhile. I wasn't too big on uh, you know watching um, you know the the love or the the human emotion going on in the the movie. The characters I didn't care too much about. There's one aspect of the movie that truly pissed me off piss me off and you guys will if you watch Godzilla if you if you already have watched Godzilla you leave a, leave a comment in the comment section about what happens in the first 15 minutes of the movie that absolutely throws you off guard and pisses you off because I was extremely upset you and they, might be the only one that was mad at that I was no I wasn't because when you see something in a in a trailer and you're expecting to to have prolonged screen time and then all of a sudden they're gone or, or the situation changes, it pisses you off. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a beastly gamer. I just got to speak my mind. But um, other than that, you know, uh, that little aspect of the movie threw me off. The love story, you know, the guy who, like the Transformers guy who's going to every place where these monsters are somehow magically was okay. But the Godzilla on monster action was extremely good. The, the ending, how Godzilla awesome. don't, ended... Don't spoil it, but... Uh, the way Godzilla ended it... Oh, it's completely awesome. She sounds like she really believes it too. <laughs> she sounds all sad. It was, guys. It was. It was sick. The way Godzilla ended the fight in this movie. So if you haven't seen Godzilla, please go out to the theaters uh, and give it a look. That's me and and uh, the Catherine, the Katie, giving you guys our Beauty and the Beast thumbs up. You give it a thumbs up. Yes, I do. It got really good scores too across the board. Across the board, I yeah. mean, yeah, it, I think it, it deserves. Uh, I mean, IGN gave it a nine. Oh, really? Um, IMDb, they, I forget what they gave it, but all the user ratings gave it a ten. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it deserves to be up there for sure, but I think it, it deserves it because of the action of the movie that that actually took place and yeah. the scale. You see my brick wall I put up? That's pretty slick, right? Yeah, I saw that. See, he has a brick wall, they can't guys. Can't break through it, can they? No, it's stuck forever. You, get you could take it down. I could take it down, but, but they, they can't. can't. Yeah, it was tight. So that way I can seal them off from ever getting in, which is pretty yeah, slick. Yeah, you should seal all the outside windows. You guys, man, buy, buy this game. If you get an option, buy it. It's very fun. It, it's very rewarding. Play it because we said so. Play, Yeah, leave us a comment in the comments. Let me know that if, if this looks like it's something you'd even give a try. There's also a demo on the PlayStation uh, Store, too. So if you don't want to buy it and you want to try it and see how you like it first, go to the PSN. Go ahead and give it a download. It won't hurt you to try it. I think it's a great game. I think you guys will really love it. Some Something else happened on our anniversary. Uh, there's been some copycat crimes going on in, in the city. Mr. Rabbit. It's the rabbit. Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit. This goes out to you guys. Congratulations. 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 I got so much love in my heart for you two. Jan, Dave, you guys are great. Uh, I'm so happy that you guys have made this, you know, it's a real big thing. Yeah, marriage. Marriage is a, a lifetime commitment. Well, nowadays it's not looked at as easily, I mean, in the same light as it was back 20, 30 years ago. But uh, it, it is a very serious thing. It means a lot, and uh, it's it's real love, you know. I'm happy for you guys. Very, very happy for you you two. Uh, Jan, you got a gamer for life, girl. <laughs> for life. You get you know, when you get him jewelry it's gotta have like the Triforce from the Legend of Zelda on it or something because you know, we're gamers. And uh Brian Rabbit and Jan, much happiness, much success in your marriage. Uh I think it's beautiful. And we share. Hope you guys are having fun. Of course they're having fun. They're having fun. They're they're, they're having uh what is it? Um honeymoon. Honeymoon, fun. yeah. Honeymoon fun. You guys I uh, hope you're enjoying yourselves. They're out there in Arizona. Which is you know, not the first place you think of as far as going to uh, 
going on a vacation, but I've never been to Arizona, so I have no idea what is out there. So I'm sure they're going to go out there. They're out there having a ball right now. Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit. And we got the same anniversary. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I mean, what what is the chances of that? Yeah, meeting someone on YouTube. Yeah, and then, you know... Exact same anniversary. And then Briar, he said, Hey, Beastly, man, I think you're so cool. You know, you're awesome at Call of Duty. Uh, and I want to be like you, man. You and Kate Tell you what, if, if you start growing your beard back out, I'll go ahead and, and, and marry Jan on your anniversary. I said, done deal. And and now look at us. I'm sure that's exactly how the story went. That's how it went, and that's my side of the story, and I'm sticking to it. I'm not going to front. You no, know? i got, I got to hear Briar's side. He's not going to talk about it. We, we made a pinky swear online. You know, he put his finger up. We did a Google uh, Hangout. He put his pinky finger on the screen, and I did too. We'll never discuss it online together. But he might tell his own side of the story to his wife. But all joking aside, you guys have a great time. Uh, you know, I think he, they're, they're taking off for a week to, you know, uh, enjoy this special time with one another. And Good. there's nothing like it, man. May 16, 2014, a great day in the history of love and gaming. They should make a reality show called Love and Gaming. They got love and hip hop, right? I don't know how that would work out. Love and basketball already happened, so love and gaming. The Briar Rabbit and Jan Rabbit channel. But uh, I <laughs> can't say enough, uh, you know, for you guys. We we love you. We're so happy for you. And uh, keep on gaming. Because I know that's what you guys are doing right now. Game, game on, and game on. Something else happened uh, this week. Microsoft announced, and I talked about this in a pr previous video, but I want to talk to... So did Nova. Oh, yeah, Nova talked about it, too. Nova be, how does Nova know this stuff? I don't, she be knowing. Who she, knows? She did, Daddy, it's a mystery. Daddy, guess what? I'm like, what? Um... Microsoft guys, they announced a $400 Xbox One without a Kinect, yep. and it's going to be released on June 9th. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this is a good idea? Honestly, do you think that this this is going to, you know, help them catch up with Sony? You know, I forget the guy's name. It wasn't Phil Spencer, but um, one of the lead lead uh, members, Microsoft team members, as far as marketing, said that Microsoft will win now because they got all the games. They get all the games. What, what kind of games do they got? <coughs> Let's think about it. How do they got all the games? Well, that's what he's he's over. You know, the spin. It's it's the spin factor. They got Titanfall. Well, Titanfall is. Uh, that's all they got, though. But Titanfall did not sell Infamous. So. I know that's what I'm saying. But uh, we're not here to hate on Microsoft. What are your thoughts on this thing? Um, do, you, do you think it was a good idea? Do you think they should have just dropped the price and took a took a hit? I think they did it just to try and compete with PlayStation, just to say they have a console that's Oh the God, same I'm price. dead. I'm fucking dead. I'll you see. Saying, oh, oh, I feel. Ooh, girl, I feel alive again. Um. Um. Yeah, I think I. I think they did it just to try and compete with PlayStation Four, just to say they have a system that's competitive enough, but it can't compare. Like. It doesn't have the same specs. The Connect is what made it more different. Yeah, cuz you could do more stuff with the Connect than you can with the PlayStation camera. Camera. And now that that's gone, it's just like the 360. Glorified. I mean, and, and that's what uh, you know, we all know that Nova stuff is scripted and, and it's it's a lot of it is humor. But the truth of the matter is, it really is kind of a glorified 360 at this point because uh, it can't keep up with the PS4 as far as specs, and what I mean is, every cross-platform game always is better on the PS4. You remove the the connect out of the box, which is the one thing that they sold the Xbox One on as this is this is the future, right? Yeah, having it with the connects. Uh, you know, this is what the direction that we're going as far as video games in the future and all this stuff. But everything they everything they said they went 180 on. And it's just bad for business. And when you don't know, when you when you don't have enough, what's the word, balls, to see your vision through, how can your 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 fan base, how can your uh, supporters, have you know faith in what you're faith saying? In you, because yeah. everything you say, you go back on. They went back on everything. The DRM, of course, we're happy they did. But the the fact is that everything they said they weren't going to do, they did. Everything that they it's like Obama. If Obama made a video game, it would have been the Xbox One, because everything they campaigned on was a lie. I mean, I will say a connectless Xbox is better than a diskless. Oh, yeah, that would have been totally that the, been the worst just, idea possible yeah. because that would have been DRM, you know, 100%. But, you know, I'm going to get a connectless Xbox One. 
because I'm not the kind of gamer. I don't need all that. I'd rather, you know, use a controller than use my hand and wave at my screen. To me, I'm just not into yeah, it. Yeah, I just... To me, it's a novelty, but it's not something I want to use every day. Like, if I get a house full of guests and they want to see what, you know, what it can do, maybe. I got the PlayStation camera because I got it basically for free, you know. I do enjoy, you know, using it, but I only use it, like, when I'm doing a it's Twitch, very, yeah, a Twitch live rare. stream or... If my headphones aren't plugged into my controller, I can talk through the camera. It's on top of the TV. But it's not something I absolutely need. So now a $400 Xbox One is looking better. And I'm yeah. sure I'm sure that if they do another thing where they cut the price in the future, it'll be 350 You know, if they do that, it'll make it a lot easier for people like me who have been waiting for it. Uh, and I know you really you want it because they just announced Halo 5. Yeah, right? that's what I want for Halo. Halo 5 just announced. It's on Amazon. I forget the name I of it. I actually tried to get you to play Halo earlier today. Yeah, we were, we were going to we were going to get some Halo going. But no. I'm just kidding. I love Halo. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a few there's a handful of good games coming out for the Xbox One uh, in the future. That we'll see what E3 has. June 9th. Yeah. Oh man, what do you think about that? As far as them, uh, Microsoft going at 9 a.m. and Sony going at 6 p.m. Um, last year didn't they go ahead of them too? Microsoft went ahead of Sony. They, yeah, they they sure yeah. did. Well, maybe they have a different strategy this time. That's <laughs> why they picked it. Maybe they're hoping to turn things around and get people to forget last. I would never, after what happened last year, go uh, before Sony this year. I'd be terrified. Yeah, but even if they go after Sony, it's not like they can really change their whole well, they already plan learned. when they go out there. Well, like, look, Sony... they got to say what they already have nope, set up to No, it's say. not true, because, look, Sony may have. But Sony uh, may have been going in the direction of the DRM, too. But when they saw the, the reaction of the audience, they came out and they were like, we're not going to do that. I mean, look... But they well, had that commercial, too. They <laughs> but that came out after E3. Oh, okay. And if I can't you if, remember. if you look at the um, the actual poster boards that was behind, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, the guy who qu who's, who quit Sony, um, Jack Trenton. Jack Trenton. If you saw the posters behind him, it looked like they just made him. It didn't look like it, there was any thought put into him. You know, we will not be doing this. We won't be restricting. It looked like they just made him at E3 just to see, you know, to basically go back on possibly what they might have been doing. Maybe. Because I mean, it was heavily rumored that. PlayStation 4 was going to have the same or similar DRM policies as the Xbox One, but well, since maybe they, Microsoft is just trying to prove that they got balls, even if they're bad balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm really uh, excited to see what happens. I'm, I'm, yeah. you know, uh, I love video games. It's always a big deal in our house when E3 yeah. comes around. And, and unfortunately for me, every E3 now I'm at work. So, we I mean, communicate yeah. as soon as stuff happens. Yeah, he was texting her ass on last year. She was texting me like yeah. crazy, telling me everything. I had to make sure he knew. Yeah, I, actually, I was watching it at lunch at work, but I didn't get to the point where I knew the PS4's price. Yeah. And then I got home, and I was like, what is it, 500 And she was like, 399 I was like, oh, shit. It's over. Yeah. Microsoft's, Microsoft's dead. I want to see what Nintendo has in store. Yeah, well, I mean, I love Nintendo. Nintendo, I mean... Come on, they're a part of the history of gaming, the culture of gaming, and they're hard-headed. That's really what it boils down to. They're hard-headed, uh, but I think at some point they gotta, they've got to understand that this change is something they gotta, they've got to move forward with. Yeah. They've got to have the technology. They've got to have, you know, uh, the games. They've got to have the third-party support. They have to have this in order to be successful. And see, this is this console and the, the GameCube was probably their two least popular consoles um, and, and they need to start getting more games that are not so childlike. cartoony and they need to youth. appeal to a more a broader yeah, audience yeah. but have know? the equipment to do that yeah I mean they gotta it's nothing wrong with kissing a little bit of ass as long as it's the right ass okay guys my I mean uh, Nintendo needs to kiss some ass they need to kiss ass of these third parties they need to kiss ass of these developers who they shitted on for all these years and say hey look what can we do to, to, to get you to develop for our new Nintendo Fusion is a great piece of hardware. We know that we had a salty relationship in the past, but things have changed here. We really want to work with you. Uh, we got some great stuff lined up, and we want you to be a part of it. And and you know, look at the hardware. Give them a, a dev kit and say, look, look what you can do on this that you can't do on those other consoles. Look how easy it is to develop on. It. And not only that, you can develop on this at the same time. You can be developing on the handheld as a part of the console. 
please work with us. We're Nintendo. We've been doing this for a long time. We kind of fell off the horse and went and got sidetracked. But it's time for us to make some changes, and we want to apologize to you as a company for the way that we've handled business over the last few years. It's time for a change. Nintendo, that's really what you guys step need to do. Step it up, Nintendo. I mean, re <laughs> real talk. I mean, they really have to step it up. Uh, and uh, E3, it's... Uh, it's shh, up in the air. It's days away. We'll see what happens. I think Sony's still going to come away victorious, but I think Microsoft does have a shitload of games that are going to basically uh, just demolish what people's uh, previous conceptions are of what they have. That's why, that's why I want an Xbox. I wanna, we're going to get one eventually. Yeah, I'm not in any rush. I mean, I... I just, I'm not in a rush. I think when the time... Right now, yeah, there's no games that I really want to play. Like, I'd play Titanfall if we had it, but I'm not yearning to play it. Yeah, I mean, I mean I've seen it. I just feel like it would, for me, probably die down quicker than even Call of Duty Ghosts. It just, it looks fast, it looks fun. But, you know, I'm watching all these guys on YouTube who do this all the time, do nothing but playing first-person shooters. And they played Titanfall for two weeks, and they're like, eh, I'm going to go back to Call of Duty. So I'm like, rather than go through that, I'll just skip that and stick with Call of Duty or, you know, play some Battlefield every now and then. But you guys know how you can play that. That's what I got to start playing. You need to just start playing, yeah, some some more stuff. Well, right now, Might it's kind of hard. Get Borderlands, yeah, you got a lot going on. Uh, yeah. Borderlands 2 on Vita. Summer, so. Well, look, guys, this has been a great episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Yeah. You enjoy chatting with the with the hearing about our fantastic anniversary. Yeah, yeah, and uh, those biscuits at Red Lobster are the best biscuits on earth. Yeah, we went to Red Lobster. It was pretty yeah. tasty. That was the only second time in my life I've been to Red Lobster. Oh, babe, I'm sorry. That's not saying a, not a lot about me, because I've been there for five no, years. No, no, I don't choose to go there often. Like, I choose other restaurants. Uh, well, look, guys. You guys go to Red Lobster if you get a chance. I hope you guys enjoyed the footage. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. And they're dead. Exactly.